Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is February the 28th, 2019. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, after a period of time where a heavyweight champion was trying to be an unbeaten, undisputed champion without fighting the lineal champion, <laughs> and after hearing all this alpha belt soup stuff, where guys were saying, look, I'm going to fight my mandatory, I'm not going to fight the person the public wants, and stuff like that. We now have clarity. Right? You go through ridiculous periods like that, and then you get back to what's true. And given developments in boxing, what I believe is true, and it's always been the case, is that the real judges are you the boxing public. Right? Simple as that. It's as simple as that. Whatever they tell you, whatever ridiculous scorecard is out there, for example, the scorecard that had Chris Eubank beating James DeGale by two rounds <laughs> in a fight where DeGale hits the canvas multiple times, and is thoroughly outboxed from start to finish. Now, short term, okay, you have to deal with the scorecard because it's the official scorecard. But long term, even DeGale understood. It's time for me to leave the sport. I just got my butt kicked. Well, let's talk heavyweights. You, the public, saw Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder. It's as simple as that. I don't care what version of events the WBC has based on the scoring of the fight. I, I, I honestly don't. You, the public, know who won that fight. The promoters know too. Whatever they say in public, understand they know. So Tyson Fury just got a boatload of money from top rank. Right? Tyson Fury is now part of the top rank stable. He'll be able to fight on ESPN Plus. Tyson Fury also, as the lineal champion, is the king. These other guys actually have to pick up the phone when one of these sanctioning body calls, right? You're the WBC champ, the WBC calls you, you have to pick up the phone, you have to listen to what the guy on the other end says about who you need to fight and stuff like that. When you're the lineal champ, when the public knows you're the lineal champ, you're the king. You don't have to answer the phone. WBC wants you to fight somebody. Who are they to tell you who to fight? You answer to the fans. You're the people's champion. You don't have to deal in this fake world where people are trying to talk about being undisputed without fighting you. You know that's fake. So, let's just take inventory at heavyweight. Understand, the WBC knows their brand took a hit because Deontay Wilder got completely undressed, completely undressed by Tyson Fury. We know the scorecard shouldn't have been close going into the 12th round. We know the only reason there's plausible deniability on who actually won the fight is because Tyson Fury foolishly is sticking around too close to Wilder in that 12th round. I give Wilder credit on landing two great shots and putting Fury down hard. Right? No question about it. But everyone knew that that 12th round was a foregone conclusion. If Tyson Fury ends the fight on two feet. You knew Tyson Fury just had to go the distance to get the win. You knew that the margin in the fight was a wide margin. 
So understand, to protect its brand, the WBC said, hey, we want a rematch. Tyson Fury's not concerned about that. You, the public, already know who won the fight. You already know that the lineal champion just beat the WBC champion. Who's the WBC to be telling a lineal what to do? So, the WBC champion, Deontay Wilder, right now as I make this video, doesn't have a dance partner. He's upset. He's a gamer. I have the utmost respect for Wilder. He wants to be great. He called out Anthony Joshua, got treated like the hired help. Right? Then pivots and fights the lineal champion. I give him all the respect in the world, but he doesn't have any leverage over Tyson Fury. He'll be lucky. Forget what's being said out there. He'll be lucky if Tyson Fury fights him again. Because understand, when we think of the two guys, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, the next thought is, well, Fury beat him, didn't he? Fury made him look terrible, didn't he? Right? We don't have to be polite here. I'm not here shilling for interviews with fighters. Right? I'm talking to the boxing hardcore. I'm talking to gamblers here online. You know who won that fight. If you were in a reputable casino, they were embarrassed not being able to pay you. Let's talk Anthony Joshua. This is the man who could be king. He has a lot of belts. He beat Vladimir Klitschko. Right? We'll overlook the fact that the lineal did that when Klitschko was younger and fresher. Joshua beat Vladimir Klitschko, for crying out loud. He beat Joseph Parker in a unification match. You know what he's doing? He's fighting a marginal contender. That's who Gerald Miller is. I'm expecting Miller to get blown out. He's fighting a marginal contender who, in private, according to reports, was dropped multiple times in sparring by Tyson Fury. Multiple times. Think about it, too. Here is Joshua who has fought big names. Right? Dylan White, right now, has really earned a shot at the title. Think about it. Joshua's even fought him. Beat him. Joshua's fought big names, and here he is at press conferences with Gerald Miller, who's beaten next to no one, and Miller's talking all kind of smack, right? Miller's trying to get psychological and stuff like that. Folks, this is ridiculous. You have to have accomplished something. If you're going to talk to an unbeaten multiple heavyweight champion... Right? Give me, give me a break. This is embarrassing to watch. I'm all for good smack talk from credible opponents. Right? Gerald Miller is coming in. Worse yet, it's that uncomfortable pre-fight period where you're giving a guy a shot at the title and the guy's coming in and trying to label you a drug user and crap like that. What's that about? Well, I just want people to understand how far Joshua's fallen because of really incredibly bad business decisions. Wilder wanted to fight him in the UK. That didn't happen. <laughs> right? Let's just say if you're going to blame somebody, and I know there's a Joshua crowd out there that always hits the comment section to my videos, and I say, hey, welcome aboard. Free speech here. Say what you want to. Right? But let's be clear here. Right? We know Wilder was willing to fight Joshua in the UK. Right? Now, I'm just telling you. Smart men involved in business deals think about what events can get for them. If Wilder is an unbeaten champion at the time, and he's willing to fight you in your backyard, at a minimum, given that you're pulling 70, 80, 90,000 people to your fights, at a minimum, don't you think, hey, the fans are going to be on my side? Could I ask for more? Given that Wilder has a belt and I have a few belts, 
am I not thinking, hey, this fight's going to be a legacy fight? People will remember my career, and they'll remember this fight. It's a big moment. One of us is going to leave the ring with our first loss. Right, folks? That's, that's what you hope for. Let me go one step further. There was a time when Floyd Mayweather, who was unbeaten at the time. Hell, Floyd's unbeaten today, folks, so you know he was unbeaten at the time. There was a time where Floyd Mayweather was going to fight a guy who had some losses. Who had been undressed in a fight by Eric Morales. Who had been stopped before. Manny Pacquiao. Now Pacquiao was a huge name. Pacquiao's a huge name now. Right? Pacquiao was a huge name. You know what Floyd offered Pacquiao? 50%. Fifty percent. You know why? Because Floyd understood. Pacquiao is probably the biggest name out there who Floyd could fight for legacy. Right? Floyd understood. If I beat Pacquiao, wow. Just imagine what I'm going to get for my next fight. Just imagine the Pacquiao fans who are going to look at me and who will know that I have beaten a great fighter. Right? As they say in boxing, you get paid not for the fight you're in. You get paid for your last fight. Now, how did Anthony Joshua blow the Wilder fight? I'll never get it. I know many of you want to explain it and say, oh, well, Wilder wanted too much money and stuff like that. I never heard Wilder say he wanted 51%. Never. Never. Well, think about it, too. Joshua's biggest victory, an argument can be made, was his victory over Vladimir Klitschko. Wasn't Vladimir Klitschko the ultimate litmus test for a heavyweight? You're a, uh, you're a young champion. Here's the former champion who was champion for years. Right? That's the fight at which Joshua arrived. So you mean to tell me Vladimir Klitschko saying, hey, I want back in. I want back in. Vladimir Klitschko is a boxing old timer. He understands that Joshua has the belts. So when he says, hey, I want back in, he's not expecting the fight to be in Germany. He understands. He shows up at the negotiations. Joshua gets to say, hey, the fight's going to be in the UK. <laughs> What's an opponent to do? Right? And OG, like Vladimir Klitschko understands, oh, I got to go fight Joshua in the UK. You know what happened. That fight didn't happen. Eddie Hearn started talking about Vladimir Klitschko fighting Dylan White. What? <laughs> Folks, what? If you saw this in a movie, you'd say, come on. This couldn't be real. Folks, unfortunately, we're living it. So then you have Dylan White. Here's a guy who, as I've said, he's beating guys. Right? He wants a shot at the title. You know what he's doing? He's fighting Joseph Parker. He's fighting Lucas Brown. He's fighting Derek Chisora. He's calling out the champs. Hey, man. That's the way boxing's supposed to be, isn't it? So they start talking to Dylan White. They offer him peanuts. Dylan White says, okay, you know what? I'll take peanuts. But if I win this fight, and you're insisting on a rematch clause, then for the rematch, where I'm the champ, then you get peanuts. Right? Folks, that, that's called karma. That's why you don't offer guys peanuts in the first place. Think about it. They couldn't get that fight done. Right? At what point? 
seriously. It's a serious question. At what point is Anthony Joshua going to look at the fans, the British fans, and say, you know, I owe them great fights. I've made millions of pounds because of these fans. I owe them. So if Deontay Wilder wants 50%, right? Folks, you're already blessed by having the fight in the UK. Don't you think, you know what, I'm going to give my fans something here. Because if I win this fight, my star will be that much brighter. Plus, I get to fight the fight before British fans. Think about it too. Understand, not everything's the split. You're talking with Wilder. He's willing to come to the UK. Why? Because in the US, he's pulling 15 to 20,000 people. In the United Kingdom, Anthony Joshua is pulling 70 to 90,000 people. As Ice Cube used to say, Big bank takes little bank. Right? So think about it. Wilder wants 50%. You know if Warren Buffett were handling the transaction. You know if Ray Dalio was handling the transaction. You know if Mark Cuban was handling the transaction. They would get other things. They would say, okay, Deontay, you get 50%. But we want a rematch clause. And we want the rematch to take place in the UK. Right? Isn't that what you do? What What am I missing? The uh, Dylan White situation. Where you're offering Dylan White peanuts. And keep in mind. You're British. He's British. Right? You've already beaten him. So he's actually a safer opponent than fighting some dangerous dude, Alexander Usyk, who you've never fought before. Suddenly you're in the fight and he's moving and he's doing this, he's doing that. And you're like, man, I haven't seen this. My title's in jeopardy here. Right? No, you're fighting Dylan White, where you know him. Isn't this the fight you want? He says, hey, I want a little bit more money. Dylan White's not a fool. He understands... Anthony Joshua's the champ. Hell, Anthony Joshua beat me. Dylan White's not expecting 50%. You mean to tell me they couldn't get that fight done? What about the Vladimir Klitschko fight? Shouldn't that have been a quick signature fight? <laughs> I don't get it. Shouldn't you be thinking to yourself, you know, I beat this guy before. He's even older now than he was then. He's been out of the ring. He's rusty. This is an opportunity to really make myself look good. Let's do this again. The first fight was a box office bonanza. Let's do it again in the same place. You know what Anthony Joshua was doing? He's crossed the Atlantic and he has to listen to Jarrell Miller talk trash. My goodness. I haven't even mentioned another obvious fight. Tyson Fury. Right? Let me just say, before a guy says, I want some other alphabet soup belts. Right? Before a guy says that, shouldn't the guy say, you know what, I have some belts, I want to take on the lineal. Right? Let me just say, I'm in the United States. There was no outcry here. I mean, no outcry here. For Joshua to fight Jarrell Miller. Now here online, I've been urging Joshua to fight Deontay Wilder. I'm telling you, a lot of people here want to see that fight. Jarrell Miller, not so much. <laughs> That's who he's fighting. 
he wants to introduce himself to American fans, so he's fighting a guy who got dropped multiple times by Tyson Fury. Come on. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, let's shift gears. I'm going to pub one service here because they are where you need to look. Let's just be clear here. They are where you need to look for what's happening right now at middleweight. Now I've ripped, as you can imagine here, Joshua's promoter, Eddie Hearn. Right? When I'm saying Joshua's making bad business decisions, folks, it's the business people around him. It's Eddie Hearn making bad decisions. But I'm going to be fair here. <laughs> Let me applaud the zone. They deserve applause here for what they've done at middleweight. Now I know there are other middleweights out there. Right? Jamal Charlo, for example. Matt Korobov. There are other middleweights out there who are world class. But you know where the action is. If you're looking for the action in middleweight, there's one big fight coming up, folks. Saul Alvarez versus Danny Jacobs. That's on the zone. That's big. So, of course, the zone decides, you know what, we want to keep this big. So they went out and they signed Gennady Golovkin. So you're thinking, my goodness, whatever happens here, we're going to get huge fights. Canelo wins, Canelo Golovkin 3. Right? I know, I know, I know, trust me, I read the comments here. I know many people feel that Canelo beat Golovkin that second fight. But then there are people like me who have yet to see Canelo beat Golovkin. And I saw the first two fights. That fight is huge. Think about this. Danny Jacobs beats Canelo. They could take this a thousand directions. You could have the Canelo-Danny Jacobs rematch. You could have the Golovkin-Danny Jacobs rematch. I know there's a group of you out there who believe Danny Jacobs beat Golovkin. I'll say this. I saw both Golovkin-Canelo fights. To me, the stretch where Golovkin looked the most bothered is when Danny Jacobs gets off the canvas. Golovkin stalking him. And out of desperation, Danny Jacobs goes southpaw. Folks, that was a jaw dropper. That's one of the best series of rounds in the last five years. Right? Golovkin's confused. Jacobs is popping a jab. Then you start to realize... You know, if Danny continues this, he still has a chance on the scorecards. Well, understand, the three guys I've just named, Canelo, Golovkin, and Jacobs, might not even be the best middleweight on the zone's roster. What I want people to do, right, and I believe if this guy gained weight, he'd conquer 168. What I want people to do is to take a hard look at Demetrius Andre. Right, folks, I'm telling you, this is a great fighter. He's a lot like Marvin Hagler. People avoid him. In other words, World-class fighters are walking down the street. They see Andre. They cross the street. Right? If they're at the mall and they see Andre, they duck into the store. Right? They don't want to deal with this guy. 
right? So I'll say this. If you're looking for the action at middleweight for 2019, I think the place to look is the zone. I think Eddie Hearn has done a better job in the middleweight division than he has at heavyweight, right? Let me just say this too. If Anthony Joshua wants to conquer America, fight Vladimir Klitschko at Barclays or Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, folks, that shouldn't be that hard to figure out. I'm just telling you, even today, more Americans know about Vladimir Klitschko than they do Gerald Miller. I'm just saying. Right? Finally, let me just say this. We're in a new day in boxing. I'm here talking about outfits like ESPN Plus and the zone. Right? Talent is able to move now. Right? Earlier I mentioned Charlo Korobov, they're with Premier Boxing Champions. Right? You have new guys and it's needed. You have new guys replacing HBO. Right? Coming into space. Enticing fighters. And competing for your attention. That's why you're seeing all these great fights. Right? These promoters are trying to make a name for themselves. So I know there's going to be some Yahoo, some neighbor, who will want you to believe that boxing is in decline. Right? Isn't there always this guy? You know, that boxing's not the same as it used to be. Folks, I cannot remember. Short of Hagler, Leonard, Hearns, Duran. I can't remember a better situation at middleweight than there is right now. Right? Understand the stars really align like this. Let me go one step further. I can't remember a better situation at heavyweight. Now, I agree. We the public, <laughs> we the public haven't seen the stars aligned. Because the people involved who could make the stars aligned just aren't getting it together. Right? But understand, you have an unbeaten champion with multiple belts, Anthony Joshua. Right? I have no idea why he's fighting Gerald Miller. I, you're going to have to take that up with Joshua and his team. I'm an outsider making videos here on YouTube. Right? I'm not giving advice to these fighters. But you have an unbeaten guy who has drawn huge crowds. You have an unbeaten WBC champion who's willing to fight anybody. Right? He's upset right now because Tyson Fury has backed out of a fight with him. Then, of course, you have Tyson Fury, in my opinion, the best at heavyweight. Let's name another name. <laughs> you know, if I asked you for a list of the best in the sport pound for pound, wouldn't Alexander Usyk be on it? Unbeaten Olympic champion, undisputed cruiserweight champion, who now wants a shot at the heavyweight title? Folks, how many fights do you think Michael Spinks had at heavyweight, this was before the cruiserweight division. How many fights did Michael Spinks have at heavyweight when Larry Holmes gave him a shot at the title? How many fights did Roy Jones have at heavyweight before John Ruiz gave him a shot at the title? Somebody's gonna have to explain to me why Alexander Usyk, who's right now pound for pound, who many people let me raise my hand. Believe was the fighter of the year last year. Who's unbeaten? Who's already beaten guys like Joe Joyce? Somebody's going to have to explain to me why he has to wait in line for a shot at the title. 
how do you have a line that has Deontay Wilder wanting to fight you, you don't fight him. Tyson Fury wanting to fight you, you don't fight him. Vladimir Klitschko wants to fight you, you don't fight him. Dylan White wants to fight you, you don't fight him. Alexander Usyk wants to fight you, you don't fight him. And instead you're fighting Gerald Miller. Folks, how does that happen? So make no mistake, the heavyweight division right now is hopelessly mismanaged, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's hopelessly mismanaged. But my goodness, how many talented, unbeaten guys do you need? How many guys who are contenders on the way up, like Dylan White, do you need? Right? The talent is there. Boxing right now is actually in a golden moment in more than one division. I haven't even gotten to welterweight, right? This video is long enough. I see I'm past 30 minutes. Just to understand at welterweight, you have a fight that could go down. That's one of the best fights of the decade, right? Let me just say this. More than a generation ago, Manny Pacquiao was supposed to be too small to fight Oscar De La Hoya. Believe it or not, even then I was online and I uh, picked Oscar De La Hoya. The fight was ridiculous to me. I went with the bigger guy. I thought, how does Manny expect to win this fight? And Pacquiao shocked the world. The fight did not go the distance. I personally believe De La Hoya, quite frankly, in his prime. De La Hoya's past his prime by the time that fight comes around. But in his prime, I think De La Hoya was better than Errol Spence. Better than um, Canelo. Right? De La Hoya was a hell of a fighter, folks. We remember Pacquiao's victory over De La Hoya. Well, that Mikey Garcia, Errol Spence fight, my goodness. Right? That could be a repeat. We might be talking about that fight 10, 15 years from now. And, of course, you have Terrence Crawford. Again, short list. Best in the sport pound for pound. You have Keith Thurman, still unbeaten. Returning to the sport after an injury. Right? Don't let anyone tell you that boxing is on its deathbed or is even at the hospital. Boxing is thriving right now. We just need to find a way to get Anthony Joshua to accept a big fight in front of 70 to 90,000 people again. We just need to find a way to open the door when Vladimir Klitschko knocks on it and says, hey, I want back in, rather than tell him, hey, fight this contender. <laughs> Fight this contender. <laughs> why don't we instead, why don't we instead tell him, hey, here's unbeaten heavyweight champion A, here's unbeaten heavyweight champion B, here's the lineal champion C, right? Here's a suggestion to close the video. Vladimir Klitschko wants back in. Deontay Wilder, who is fearless. Who is fearless? Any man who fights Luis Ortiz is, is fearless. By the way, that's who, if, if he's going to get off the grid, that's who Joshua should be fighting. Luis Ortiz. Right? Southpaw. Joshua's developing a jab. Give us a dynamic that's risky. You say, wow, is he going to land a jab on a southpaw? But getting back to my point, Deontay, Vladimir Klitschko, that's a great fight. That's a global fight. You could fight that in New York City. You could fight that in Las Vegas. You could fight that in the United Kingdom. You could fight that in Germany. Hell, you could fight that in Moscow. Right? Just think about the possibilities. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Congratulations on Tyson Fury getting big money from Top Rank and ESPN+. Plus. I'm a subscriber. I look forward to those fights. Congratulations to Golovkin. 
getting big money from the zone. I'm a subscriber. I'm looking forward to those fights. Let me also congratulate Canelo. If there's ever been a fighter who is fearless, who wants to fight the best, who, who says, okay, I've fought Golovkin, I'm going to fight him again. Then, of course, after fighting the champ one floor up in Rocky Fielding, comes back and says, let me fight Danny Jacobs. I have to cheer his spirit. That's how I see it. By the way, I still think Golovkin won the two fights, but that's another story. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video and keep an eye out for Demetrius Andre. I'm serious as a heart attack. I'm expecting him to be a huge underdog. If a fight's announced against Golovkin, Canelo, or Danny Jacobs, right? Andre's going to be a huge underdog. I believe that's going to make him the value play, right? Because it does come down to percentages. Even if you think Canelo might be able to beat him, at a certain price point, if they tell you we'll give you two and a half to one or three to one, at a certain point, they're going to beat your price. Figure out what that is before they post the odds. That's how I see it. Thanks for stopping by. I look forward to reading your comments. Peace.